Whether it's high art or beautiful trash, the AV Club explores the best of film, TV, music, books, and games. Inventory is our obsessively specific pop culture list. Welcome to Inventory. Today we're going to be talking about ridiculous killer robots. When this uh, inventory first came up, the first thing that came to my mind was the little battle droids from the new Star Wars films. Uh, that doesn't compute. But then another movie came to my attention, and once I watched it, I realized I, I had to talk about it. It's Roman uh, with a hyphen from the 3D movie Robot Monster. He is, in fact, a guy in a gorilla suit with a fake diving bell on his head. Humans, listen to me. This is a, a man named George Barrows who got a lot of work in the 50s and 60s by virtue of the fact that he had his own gorilla suit. <laughs> He's actually a really successful ridiculous killer robot. He starts the film by uh, hitting Earth with a ray that kills everybody on the planet except for eight people. And there are perhaps eight people left on Earth. And then he spends the rest of the movie trying to kill those eight people. Fool humans, there is no escape. Unfortunately, becoming too human turns out to be Roman's fatal flaw. Suppose I were human. Would you treat me like a man? Oh, the humanity. <laughs> You sound like a human, not a Roman. It was made over the course of four days for $16,000, and it really shows in the filmmaking. There are a lot of flubs, a lot of line errors. Come and get us. That said, it was actually a huge hit in its time. Made for $16,000, it made a million dollars, and it was highly praised for the, uh, the 3D effects and uh, just for its overall humanity. You look like a pooped out pinwheel. Genevieve, the robot you wanted to talk about is actually meant to be ridiculous, right? Yeah, Futurama features dozens if not hundreds of robots programmed with very specific purposes. So I says, Super Collider, I just met her. So it only makes sense that in the year 3000 someone has designed a robot for stabbing people. Now stand back, I gotta practice my stabbing! Roberto the robot's main passion in life appears to be stabbing, but he's kind of an all-around bad guy. He first appears in the season 3 episode Insane in the Mainframe, in which he holds up the same bank three times. Hands up! This is a stick up again! He frames Fry for his crime. Hey, thanks, buddy! He breaks out of an insane asylum. So when were you planning to break out? I'm thinking maybe a few seconds ago. And he holds the entire Planet Express crew hostage. Back off! I got hostages! Hooray! I'm helping! That actually sounds like a really effective killer stabbing robot. I guess he did successfully stab Fry, but the end result wasn't what he intended. Ah! Oh! Oh! He's certainly not the only killer robot in the Futurama universe. There's also Robot Santa Claus. <laughs> There's the Robot Devil. I heard him! And of course, the horde of Lucy Lubots. Oh no! They're forming a human pyramid of robots! So, Sean, unlike Roberto, your killer robots have a very specific origin story. Right, well, the entire premise of the Bill and Ted series is that our collective fate rests on the shoulders of two generic sort of metal rockers, um, played by Keanu Reeves and Alex Winter. I'm Bill S. Preston, Esquire! And I'm Ted Theodore Logan! And we're Wild Stallions! Their music is so universally adored that it unites the whole of civilization. Be excellent to each other. But as with any band with mainstream appeal, there's bound to be some contrarians. And, and that's Joss Ackland. He won't get away with it. Time will tell. So he does that by sending these robot doppelgangers of Bill and Ted back through time. In order to successfully infiltrate their lives, uh, these ostensibly highly intelligent killer robots have the natural dumbass dispositions of Bill and Ted themselves. But here's the truth. We're totally going to kill you now. <laughs> you dick, Bill! After a trip through the afterlife, Bill and Ted come to the realization that the only way to defeat evil robot versions of themselves is to create their own robot versions of themselves. Okay, if we were good human usses, but we had to fight two evil robot usses, what would we do? Make good robot usses? So they seek the help of God. We were thinking along the lines maybe of a, a scientist or something. Who hooks them up with these alien dead scientists. A short trip to the hardware store later, and all of a sudden, Bill and Ted's bogus journey actually doubles its quotient of stupid killer robots. You two dudes ready to take on those evil losses and save the babes? It all comes down to the Battle of the Bands concert in San Dimas, and the sparks literally fly. <laughs> Guys, you later, Bill and Ted! 
this is sounding more and more like a, a tragedy, like a, a tragedy of Ingmar Bergman proportion. Right, I was going to say, it's like a Wim Wenders movie in a way. <laughs> of these ridiculous killer robots, which one would win in a fight? See, mine were only programmed to kill two people, and she just killed an entire planet. Yeah, and really stabbing isn't the most effective way to kill someone. <laughs> I am ordered to kill you. I must do it with my hands. For more ridiculous killer robots, visit avclub.com.